This video describes the proper procedure for thermally welding an IntelliQ belt. Remember to turn off and lock out all electrical and pneumatic power to the conveyor before attempting this procedure. If this is the first time you have used the welding equipment, you will need to check the settings on the control timers and the clamping pressure of the heating unit. Be sure to unplug the welding unit before starting this procedure. To check the timers, remove the four screws on the top of the control box and lift the cover to expose the timers. There are two timers, a heating cycle timer and a cooling cycle timer. The heating timer is shown on the left and should be set for two minutes. The cooling cycle timer is shown on the right and should be set for 0.25 hours. Turn the dials in the center of the timers to adjust the timer settings if necessary, then replace the cover on the control box. Next, you need to confirm the pressure setting of the heating unit. This is accomplished by measuring the distance between the side rails with the heating unit closed and the locking clamp in place. The distance between the side rails at the front of the unit should be 1 inch. Adjust the nuts on the U-bolt clamp latch if necessary to achieve the correct setting. Now measure the distance between the side rails at the back of the unit. It should also measure 1 inch. Loosen the black hex head screws on each side of the unit to adjust this setting if necessary. A special cutter is used to prepare the ends of the belt for welding. During this process, you may need to clamp the belt ends to the work surface to keep them from falling away. With the V-guide facing up, insert the IntelliQ belt into the cutter on the side with the black knob. Route the belt under the pressure plate and clamps until the edge of the belt aligns with the end of the cutter base. Make sure the belt is seated and aligned in the channel of the base and make sure the V-guide is secured inside the brace at the bottom of each clamp. Clamp the belt on both ends to hold it securely. Make sure the release knob on the cylinder is tight and pull down the handle of the cutter using a pumping action to lower the pressure plate onto the belt. Continue pumping until you feel the die cut completely through the belt. Then loosen the release knob to allow the pressure plate to lift off the belt. A special metal pry tool supplied with the cutter is used to lift the belt off the cutting die. Before removing the belt from the cutter, check to see that the blades have cut all the way through the belt. With the belt still clamped in place, position the pry tool just inside the groove between the plastic base and the pressure plate. Using firm pressure, lift the belt off the cutter edges. Do this for both sides. Then unclamp the belt from both sides and discard the excess belt. Repeat the process for the other side of the belt. Be sure to insert the belt into the side of the cutter opposite the black knob, otherwise the belt fingers will not align properly. Again, be sure to clamp both sides of the belt, checking to see that the V-guide is in place. This will ensure an even cut. Tighten the release knob and pump the cylinder to lower the pressure plate as before. Notice how the belt is pressed onto the blades, forcing the blades through the belt material. Sometimes it may be necessary to apply pressure more than once to get a clean cut. You can raise the pressure plate at any time to check progress and then continue cutting. A good cut is one in which the blades are visible through the belt material. Release the pressure and use the pry tool to remove the belt from the cutter as before. Unclamp the belt and discard the excess belt. You now need to prepare the reinforcing material or foil. The correct length of foil is equal to the narrow width of the top section of the heating plate. Place the top of the heating plate across the foil as shown. Cut on both sides of the plate to ensure the foil has straight edges and is the proper length.
you will notice that the two surfaces of the foil differ. For the sake of standard practice, place the shiny side of the foil against the belt. Caution! For this next step, make sure the welding unit is unplugged and cool to the touch before beginning. The heating plate should be placed against the alignment pins located near the back of the welding unit. Set the top of the heating plate and the foil within easy reach. This step may also be done with the heating plate on the work surface instead of on the welding unit if you desire. Insert the two belt ends into the channel at the bottom of the heating plate with the V-guide facing down. Carefully interlock and align the ends of the belt. Make sure the ends are firmly seated together and the top surfaces are flush with each other. This is crucial to ensure a good weld. Be sure to clamp the ends of the belt to the work surface. This will keep the belt ends from pulling away from the splice during the heating process. Continue working the ends of the belt together to get the best possible fit. The tighter the fit, the better the weld. Next, add the foil. Remember to place the shiny side facing down. Now place the top of the heating plate on the belt to press the belt ends and the foil firmly together. Be careful to align the two narrow bars on the top of the plate with the edges of the top heating platen. Pull down the handle of the welding unit to hook the latching mechanism and then push it back to lock the clamp. Make sure the control unit is plugged in and then toggle the power on button on the control unit. The button will light and remain lit for the duration of the welding cycle which is approximately 35 minutes. When the welding cycle is complete, the cycle complete indicator light will come on. Simply toggle the power on button again to turn off the heating unit. Both lights should go dark. Check to make sure the unit is cool, then release the clamp and raise the lid. Remove the belt by simply lifting it out of the heating plate. The top portion will likely remain attached to the belt. Put the belt on the work surface and pull the top of the heating plate off the belt. Inspect the weld to ensure the weld is smooth. Check for bubbles or fingers not joined together tightly. Turn the belt over so the white side is facing you. Black spots at each fingertip indicate a good weld. Thick black lines between the fingers indicate too much of a gap between the fingers and the belt may need to be re-welded. The next step is to remove a portion of the V-guide over the weld. This will increase the life of the weld. To do this, place the belt on the work surface with the V-guide facing up. Using a sharp knife, remove the section of the V-guide over the weld. Use caution as this material can require effort to cut. It is best to cut the V-guide on one side of the weld and then cut from the other side of the weld to the first cut that was made. Remove the V-guide as close to the surface of the belt as possible without cutting the belt. Cut the edges of the V-guide to a point to ensure smooth transitions as the belt passes through the roller guides and drive mechanism. You will also need to bevel the leading edge. You can bevel both edges if desired. When completed, you should have removed approximately 4 inches of the V-guide. Finally, re-inspect the weld to ensure there are no gaps, cracks, or bubbles that could lead to premature belt failure. If installing a Dutchman, repeat this procedure. 
If this is the final weld, remove the welder and prepare the conveyor for operation. Remember to observe proper safety procedures whenever operating a conveyor.